five cents for five days' work delivering paper. Then we'll be able to buy Mom that beaded Indian bag for going away press. Right, Slicker? Come on, let's get to the trading post. a dozen times. You used it all up. It cannot be so. You calling me a liar? The government pays you 50 cents a day for food for us. Where is the money? I'll tell you where it is. You ate it all up. You're a bunch of lazy, shiftless savages. Go on, get out of here. I'm not giving any of you any more food till I get your next allotment. Go on, get out. You, Watana, you got any money? Or are you going to waste my time again? I came for what is rightfully mine. Please, Mr. Crane, we do not come to make trouble. A papoose needs food all night, she cries. You got any complaints, go see Burton. He's the Indian agent, not me. Yes, the Indian agent. Hey, come back here, you thieving redskin! Clear that doorway or I'm gonna start shooting. Trouble is coming to the reservation. I do not want my papoose to be hurt. You take her home, please. Me take a papoose? But what am I going to do with the papoose? Do not ask questions now. Please help me. I must go before he catches me. He must not see you. Go, go quickly. Wait, Natif. I've got to go to the trading post. Get out of here. Mom's present will have to wait a while. Rob, you sure you can manage without me? The conceit of a woman. What is there to manage? Oh, nothing very much, I guess. Well, honey, will you help me with this? Oh, I forgot. Just in case, a little reminder. If there's one thing military training does for a man, it's sharpen his memory. Orders of the day. Morning. Wake and camp. Light the stove, start the coffee, prepare the breakfast, wash the breakfast dishes, make the beds, sweep the floors, water the garden. Gosh, honey, I never realized you did all that around. Now, maybe you'll learn to appreciate me. I appreciate you. I've never stopped appreciating you. Not since the first day I saw you. Hmm. Oh, Rob. I hate to leave you and Ken. Say, by the way, where is that young man? I don't know.
Gee, I've never been this close to a real baby before. Isn't she cute, Flicka? Now you wait here, girl. Gus, have you seen that son of mine? Nell's gonna miss her train. Aaron Murray, Captain. You know the boy. Sure, he's probably picking up another one of those specimens he's always bringing home. Like a one-eyed toad or a three-legged owl. He knows his mother's leaving. Well, maybe this time he bring home a skunk. Then we all have to take a trip. <laughs> one thing, Sheriff. They're not expecting to see you. I'd better break the news easy. Now, you take good care of her, Flicka. You haven't got a thing to worry about. Flicka's a lady. She'll know how to handle you. Delayed you, Ken. Well, you see, there was this Indian, and... Uh... Indian? I suppose he tried to scalp you. Oh, no, he didn't. I mean, she didn't. She was a squaw Indian, and she had this here papoose. What papoose? The one I'm trying to tell you about. Anyway, she didn't want him to catch her. Who, the papoose? No, the man who was chasing her. I tried to tell her I couldn't take it home, but... Take what home? Sounds like a baby cry. That's what I've been trying to tell you, Mom. I've got a papoose. Flicka's taking care of it in the barn. Flicka? Well, I never. See, Mom? I told you Flicka was mine here. Good girl, Flicka. Oh, Rob, it's adorable. I didn't want Mr. Crane to see me, so I came on home. She begged me to take the baby. What else could I do? You did what you thought was right, son. And that's the important thing. We'll get in touch with Mr. Burton, the Indian agent, right away. And he'll know how to handle us. Rob? You'd better get going, honey, if you want to get out of here today. The baby's sick. She has a fever. A fever? That's serious. If anything happens to that papoose here off the reservation, we could be in a lot of trouble. What do you think's wrong with her? I don't know. Poor little thing is starving to death. I think we should have the doctor. I'll get him, Mom. I can get there real quick on Flicka. What about your train now? You don't think I'd leave now? All right, Ken, get Dr. Adams. Okay, Dad. And while you're in town, tell Mr. Burton, the Indian agent, what you saw. Rob, could you get me one of your large handkerchiefs? What in the world do you want one of my handkerchiefs for? Now, don't ask silly questions and just get it. What's this about a papoose? Well, she's at our ranch. Her mother's name is Matisse. Matisse? You say the papoose is at your home? Matisse gave her to me. You see, that's what I want to talk to you about. But I guess I ought to see Dr. Adams first, because the papoose is sick. Oh, that's too bad. We've got to do something about that right away. You see, being the Indian agent here, it's my duty to take care of things like that. That's what my dad said, especially when I told him that T said there's going to be big trouble at the reservation. Trouble? What kind of trouble? I don't know, sir. She didn't say. She was in a hurry to get away from Mr. Crane, but he caught her and slapped her around. Say, now, you've got a lot of news, haven't you? 
About the biggest news I ever had, sir. Well, you're a very bright boy, and you did right coming directly to me. I'll take care of everything. Don't worry about it. Thanks. But I better get to see Dr. Adams now. Oh, don't, don't worry about it, Ken. I have to go right by his place, and I'll tell him. You run along on home, and don't worry about it. Dr. Adams, I'll get it. Mrs. McLaughlin. Mr. Burton, isn't Dr. Adams with you? No, he's out on a call, but don't worry about it. I'll just take the papoose back to her mother, and uh, she'll be able to take care of it. I don't think she should be moved with the fever. Oh, now, Mrs. McLaughlin, you know, a fever doesn't mean a thing with babies. It comes and goes like that. I'm sure it can't be anything serious. How can you be sure? Are you qualified to know? Well, I wouldn't say that exactly, but some of these Indians have very strange ideas about doctors. It'd be better to let one of their own medicine men take over. Oh, if you'll just let me have her. I don't think she should be moved until Dr. Adams sees her. Wait a minute, Mrs. McLaughlin. I think I know what's best for the Indians. And I think I know what's best for a baby. I'm sure it wouldn't do any harm to leave the baby here until Dr. Adams sees her. That's for me to decide. You know, of course, that you're breaking the law by keeping her off the reservation. How can you talk about the law when a child's life might be at stake? I'm just warning you, if you want to keep out of trouble, you better let me have her now. Your boy shouldn't have brought her here in the first place. I don't like threats, Mr. Burton, especially in my own home. I think you'd better go now. All right. But remember, you're illegally holding a government ward. When I come back, it'll be with a U.S. Marshal and a warrant for your arrest. Put you in here, you weren't very bright. What do you mean by that? What's the idea of slapping that squaw around? Oh, you heard about that. Well, she came in this morning, tried to steal some grub. I finally caught her. That's all I was to it. That's all I was, eh? Did you know she gave her pat boost to the McLaughlin kid and it's out at the Goose Bar Ranch now? Sick! Oh, that's bad. Why don't you be smart? We've got a good thing here if we play it right. Let's not be greedy. You're squeezing them too hard. What about the papoose? I'll pick up the kid, all right. Don't worry. If any trouble now can lead to an investigation. We'll have the whole Indian Bureau down on our heads. I don't know what your Indian name is, but to me, you're a little trouble. Why did you come back? Why did you bring back my papoose? We couldn't keep her any longer. I almost got my dad in a lot of trouble on account of her. But it is dangerous for her here. Listen. <laughs> Wardrobes. 
Yes. Tonight they are going to attack the trading post. They will kill Mr. Crane. They will once again be like their forefathers. Killing, burning, destroying. And in turn, they will be killed and burned and destroyed. It has happened before. That is why I want my baby to be away from here. I better go and get some help. They've got to be stopped before it's too late. Yes. I'm the U.S. Marshal. I have a warrant here for your arrest. Sworn out by Mr. Burton here. Come in. Mrs. McLaughlin. What are the charges against my husband? That's all right, honey. I'll talk to him. Uh, Mr. Burton says you've got a papoose here off the reservation. That's breaking the law. We're only keeping her here, Marshal, until Dr. Adams arrives. The child is ill. You mean you weren't aiming to keep her here? No, of course not. Why should we? You didn't tell me that. Well, what difference does it make? Uh, the papoose is my responsibility. It's up to you to see that I get her. Well, maybe we could talk this out. That won't be necessary, Marshal. Honey, run upstairs and get the baby. Look, uh, as long as McLaughlin's giving you the papoose, why don't you drop the charges and forget about her? I guess it is be all right. You understand that I was only trying to do the best thing for the Indians. What's keeping us so long? Rob? Rob! What's wrong? Where's the baby? Ken took her back to the reservation. Ken's my son. He didn't want me to get in trouble for something he did. I suppose he thought if he took her back, everything would be all right. That's the way a small boy's mind works, you know. Captain! Captain! Oh, excuse me. Flicker just came back without Ken. Well, Ken must be in trouble. Flicker would never come back alone. Yeah. Marshal, we'd better get out to that reservation. Well, I don't think that would be necessary. As long as the baby's back, everything's all right. Let's forget about it. Well, everything isn't all right. My son is in danger. He said something about trouble brewing among the Indians. Gus, saddle horses. Yeah. Please hurry, Gus. Yep. Marshal, we better get going. I'll pick up some men on the way. You better come with us, Burton.
murdered a thief and savages, and they should have been wiped out years ago instead of being pampered and treated like civilized people, handing them cartridges. I won't do it. They don't want you to say it all. You're just a mean man. I saw the way you treated the teeth. Well, I want them cartridges. You can't have them no matter what happens. You can't have them. Oh, shut up. You're going to get more than you expect. We don't want that. All we come for is... We have had enough words. This is what he will understand. everything. They broke in here, wanted to kill me. They're a bunch of murder and thieving. I'd suggest you listen to the other side of the story first, Marshal. It's a waste of time. They'd only lie. It's a strange attitude for a man who's supposed to represent their interests. Who's the spokesman here? I, Watana, will speak for my people. I want to hear what you've got to say. Mr. Crane and Mr. Burton have been cheating and starving my people. Can you prove that? Yes, I can prove it. Then we'll all go down to my office. And you can tell me your story. You mean you would take our word against a white man's? You have my word on that. Ooh. Here they come, missus. We better hurry. Well, honey, you can leave now with a clear mind. Dr. Adams is taking care of the papoose. She's going to be all right. Oh, I'm so relieved. How'd the investigation go? Oh, Ken was a star witness. The marshal telegraphed all the way to Washington and asked for new Indian agents. And you know what else? No, what? I got this for you from Matisse. She made it herself. It's... It's your going away present, Mom. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you, Ken. Say, we better get you down to the depot. Bye, son. Be a good boy. Don't worry, Mom. Ken, I'll be back in about an hour, and I don't want to come home and find any more strays of any kind. And that's an order. Yes, sir. Like it? 